think in the next three to five years, the U.S. faces a tough road ahead. Uh, economically, it's no secret that we're in, in tough straits. Um, politically, we've lost some influence overseas at a time when other countries are rising powers. But I think if you look at the strategic landscape, let's start in the Middle East. We're exiting from Iraq. Iran has risen out of uh, the situation where we deposed Saddam Hussein. So now they're kind of on the march, both as a nuclear power and also exerting influence in Palestine and undermining peace throughout the Middle East and in Yemen, by the way. If you look at Afghanistan, we've been there for 10 years. Uh, we're looking for a way to resolve this. Uh, it's, it's, it's iffy. Um, and then you go to Asia, where China is a rising power. They are uh, feeling their oats. They're testing out territorial claims against neighbors. Um, and if you look at Japan, which has been a longtime treaty ally, uh, a nonviolent country, they have a constitution that we wrote after World War II, uh, there's a lot of anti-Japanese nationalism in China. And so the worry is that Japan, which has now elected uh, a party that has not been in power for 50 years, uh, they're a little bit distant from the United States. People are worried that if Japan remilitarizes, maybe Korea will get nervous, China will get nervous. This could undermine stability in Asia. The Koreans have postponed the turnover of command from the U.S. to Korea just out of caution. So we need to be very attentive to the strategic sort of security architecture in Asia. The Middle East uh, is going nuclear, as I say, uh, and the Arab states have responded. They've all started civil nuclear programs. We really need to get on top of these situations. I think as we look at this tough road in the next three to five years, we're not playing the strongest hand. Uh, our economy is in a position where clearly the elections, the mid-year elections, have said we've got to spend less money. So the political system will be looking to economize, even in the Pentagon, where Secretary Gates wants to essentially take $100 billion less in the next five years and get the same result. Uh, so we're in a tough spending mode. I think politically, the American people are more focused on jobs and, and the domestic situation. Uh, it's hard to focus on the big things that need to get done overseas where American influence is the key to the whole thing, whether it's Middle East peace, whether it's stopping Iran's nuclear march, whether it's making sure that China's rise in Asia doesn't destabilize our five treaty allies there and the rest of the region. There's a lot there that's at stake, and I think we're playing somewhat uh, from, from a, a, a weak hand. We tend to be focused a lot more than we used to be on the political game inside Washington. Um, both major parties are looking at sort of movements on their outer flanks. Uh, the opposition party is more interested in bringing the president down and stopping him than in uh, uniting behind him to get something done beyond uh, our shores. That's a tough way uh, to address international problems. So I think the first thing we need to do is, is set some strategic priorities that all Americans can agree on that are very important. We don't want to be, you know, in an international system that we created, by the way. We founded the United Nations. We put it in New York. We don't like everything about it. But uh, if we don't have it, we're competing in the law of the jungle against six billion people around the earth. And that's not a place we want to be. We can be the preeminent power in the 21st century. But the game has changed. Uh, the industrial era was when governments were dominant. And there were three major networks, and there were uh, recording houses that made all the music. And this is all dissipated in the information age, where uh, non-state actors and individual citizens are empowered for good or for bad. We haven't kept up in Washington. We need to realize that there's a whole youth bulge coming out of the East and India and uh, Latin America that we need to connect with, and we need to influence. And we probably need to use more than bayonets uh, to move the things that threaten us. We can't just stop things at the port of New York or, you know, at a, at a FedEx facility in Britain. We've got to get, uh, figure these problems out, solve them, if you will, psychologically, uh, in the information space, uh, in the belief space. We need to stand for something, and we need to convince people that we will be the leader in the 21st century.